the lady chosen by our panel of judges to be the second runner-up is... Natasha! Congratulations, Natasha. After the break. <laughs> they are just so lovely. This is it. The most amazing, life altering moment for one of these ladies. They wake up tomorrow morning with a different title to their name. The winner of the 62nd Miss South Africa title is Shudabata Mosida! It is a new dawn, South Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, your 62nd Miss South Africa, Shurubanzo Musida. Oh, what a glorious, glorious evening. Thank you to our beautiful panel, panel of judges. You truly, truly uh, chose well tonight. Thank you so much to everyone tuning in from around the world and, of course, to our beautiful, beautiful rainbow nation of South Africa. From myself, Kumashan, Dunda Bezlika, Sonjigazi, Nopsamon Bata, and, of course, my beautiful colleague, Lana Hiroyama. Good night from the city of Cape Town. Thank you. It's an honor for me to speak with you. It's a, thank you so much for having me. I am Shudupadzo Musida, Miss South Africa 2020, Miss World South Africa 2021. Um, and yes, I'm a mental health um, advocate. Uh, I'm an author. I, I am an academic. I I just I love women. I love working in spaces um, that 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 help me be of service to 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 the most vulnerable people, members of our community. I'd like to think that I'm kind. Um, um, I'm not very funny, but I think I am sometimes, <laughs> and um, I'm very loving. The word beauty is exactly what you've just said. It's, it's something that is within us that radiates on the outside. It's not something that is skin deep. It is, it is something that is within us, as I've said, that radiates on the outside. So when you're beautiful on the inside, I truly believe that you're beautiful on the outside too. Um, and that's the most important beauty of all. And when you are beautiful on the inside, they, I think there's a lot of self-love that goes into that, which also speaks to my mandate of mental health. I preach about self-love all the time. When you love yourself, it's easier for you to radiate love to the rest of the world. So um, when I won my South Africa, before I even won my South Africa, I spoke about the mindful movement. And the mindful movement consists of three things, which is 
Yes, the mental health advocacy, but also the Mindful Mondays that I do on Instagram every single Monday uh, at 7 p.m. So we invite experts that come in and teach people about mental health. So the mandate is mental health education. So that targets young adults and adults. But I thought that in order to destigmatize mental health, we need to start from the ground up. And that starts with children. If we teach children about mental health from a young age, they're going to understand that it's okay to not be okay. But the biggest lesson of all is that they're not alone. You are never alone. There's always someone that's willing to listen. So speak up until your voice is heard. Your voice matters. And this book emphasizes the power of the voice, the power of, of, of friendship, the power of love, but also emphasizing that our voices matter. So imagine if we empower kids from a young age through mental health education, through integrating that into the education system. I think that is a great step towards destigmatizing mental health and removing the shame that exists and, and moving it from being a taboo subject to one that is openly discussed in public forums, such as um, the one that we, we are using today. Uh, I've always wanted to be an author, um, but most of my writing has been essays because of my academic work. So I've written essays and I've written a thesis, but I, I never thought that I'd be an author at such a young age. Um, but I'm very honored that um, I, I had a great support system that, that encouraged me to write this book and then become a children's author. And it's something that I'm going to explore going forward in, in, in my life. Yes. So for every book that is sold, one is donated to Childline South Africa, which works to protect the, 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 the children's rights um, in South Africa and also to the South African Depression and Anxiety Group, which is a huge mental health uh, organization that provides the resources needed for people that need mental health care. Yes, literacy is an integral part of education um, uh, when it comes to children. Um, I think we empower children's minds through literacy and through, through, through um, also mental health education. So for me, literacy was the thing that empowered my mind. And I just want to pay it forward and empower the next child's mind too through literacy. Um, I've, I'm, I've, we're working on making sure that it's available worldwide, obviously, because we're trying to take it to the global stage. So that is something that we're still working on. But I know that it's available at all major retailers across Africa. But you can also order your book at the on online platforms that can be delivered to you wherever you are in the world. Um, so if you visit the Miss South Africa website, it will give you the online platforms where you can order the book. Um, where you can order the book and get it to deliver to get it delivered to wherever you are in the world. After this interview, I can go to the website of Miss South Africa to buy your book because I yeah. want to read this book. <laughs> no, please, please. I, I really appreciate yes. it. We are, we are on the website and on the magazine, uh, the next high suit of the magazine, we, we talk about your book. Oh, my goodness. Thank you so much. Yes. You have promoted your book because it's a great idea. It's a great challenge. And I want uh, you, so you, buy, you buy a lot of books. Yes, and the more books, and the beautiful thing is the more books that we, 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 we sell, the more is donated to charity. I mean, there are so many organizations doing amazing work. And if we can assist in any way and just be of assistance, but also uh, pushing the, 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 the importance of mental health education, I think then we've done uh, a big thing for, for our children. Uh, it's not a parade, parade of, of, of bodies um, or just a parade of beauty. I think beauty, beauty pageants have, have, have um, transformed and, and, and moved into, into a space that is bigger than that. I mean, if you look at the Miss World organization, the work that they've been doing with Beauty with a Purpose is work that is being done by huge organizations such as the United Nations. Um, it is a huge um, organization that has made sure that not only do they showcase yes, the, the, the beauty of women, but they also showcase the purpose that women have and the power that we have to make a change and to create our own seats at the tables. Um, the, the work that they've done across the world, I mean, they raise money in almost every single country that they go to, to better the lives of the people that they leave behind. And they continue to, 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 to work with those organizations that they, that they encounter. I've been watching a lot of Beauty with the Purpose campaigns and I'm amazed at the amazing work that's done. So for people that don't understand what pageantry is, 
I think they should look at the work that has been done, not only by the Miss World organization, but 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 also the Miss South African organ Miss South Africa organization. My biggest dream was to work with or for the UN, and I've been afforded that opportunity through platforms like Miss South Africa, through pageantry, where I get to, I get to showcase my purpose and my advocacy and change and impact people's lives through 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 platforms such as such as um, um, the Miss South Africa and Miss World platform. Um, so I only pray, I only hope rather, um, that I can continue to do that through the Miss World platform. And I know that irrespective of crown or no crown, the beauty of the purpose campaign is something that is within all of us, especially as women, it's within all of us. We all have a beauty with a purpose. We spoke about what beauty means at the beginning of this interview and beauty is something that is within us, not what is on the outside. So I, I, to the people that don't realize the impact of beauty pageants or where beauty pageants are, um, I think they should do a bit, a bit more research because a lot of work has been done, especially um, with the beauty with the purpose campaign. I, I think that is something that has changed my, my life in the sense that it makes me want to do more, that I can get to be a beautiful woman, yes, but also have a purpose that impacts millions of lives. The biggest thing is that your reign is what you make it through the teamwork that you do with the organization that you work with, you know. Um, I think my organization, the Miss South Africa organization, the work that we've managed to do together through putting our heads together, where it's not just me as Miss South Africa, but there's a whole team, there's a whole, there's a whole village behind me that backs me. And it's taught me the importance of working together to make the world um, a better place. I mean, we all have a collective responsibility to, 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 to impact people's lives, you know, but I realized that we can't do it alone. We need to do it together. And that is what pageantry has taught me that you don't work alone. You don't walk alone. You work with an, you work um, with an entire village and you walk with an entire village behind you. And I, I, I suppose we have a lot of team, a, a big team to support you for Miss World 2021. Yes, yes, yes. I've got my team and I've got my entire country. I mean, the support that they've shown me throughout my reign has been absolutely amazing. I, I've gained family. That's what I've gained. I think that's what I've gained. I've gained family more than anything else. And I'm so I'm so honored um, to have been given this role. And now as I step into a new role of being Miss, um, Miss World, uh, Miss, South, Miss World uh, South Africa, um, I'm so honored to represent all the people that have supported me and worked with me throughout this year and throughout my life and take that forward to, to the world stage. I think with the pressure and the expectations for me, it's just making sure that I do the work. Even if 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 you followed my Miss South Africa reign, all I've done is just make sure that I do the work. And as I go to Miss World, I just want to show the world my beauty with a purpose. You know, to take the 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 work that we've done throughout the Miss South Africa reign and take it to the global stage to show that mental health is not just a South African problem, but it's a global problem. It's a global issue that needs to be um, addressed as part of the um, Sustainable Development Goals. Um, so with me, the pressure it's not pressure that I feel, but it's all more of a response responsibility to make sure that I continue the work and take it to the world stage and present that to the world and, and everyone else that will be watching. My best asset. I wouldn't really call it an asset, but I've called it a passion. When I was eight years old, um, I decided that I wanted to live a life of service. That is my passion, to be of service to the world. And I've been very honored to be able to do that through pageantry. And as I go to Miss World, I just want that to radiate and, and, and to inspire others to speak the language of service. Um, um, I, I'm sure that I'm gonna meet incredible women. And, and with me personally, if I can just encourage other people who will be watching the pageant to speak the language of service, because I truly believe that if we all speak the language of service, we can work, make the world a better place by making a meaningful change and impact um, um, in, our, in our communities. I think I'm looking forward to meeting, I'm, I'm looking forward to meeting um, 
the, the rest of the ladies and learning about their beauty with a purpose campaigns. And because as I've said, when we work together, we can make the world a better place. And by learning about them, learning them as women and also learning about their beauty with a purpose campaigns, I think that will inspire me to know that the, the work that I'm doing is not only confined within the South African space, but it's a global, it's a global campaign, but also just competing at Miss World is that means I'm part of the Miss World family forever. So, so I'm very, I'm looking forward to that, to be part of the Miss World family and to just meet the, the, the women there and, and just, just learn more about them and their, and, and, and their work. Have you already some contact with other candidates? No, no, I haven't been in contact with the other uh, candidates, um, but I'm looking forward to, I'm sure as time leads, um, uh, as time draws near, we're going to get into contact, um, but I'm looking forward to meeting them and, and just getting to, to know them better. I think I'll just continue the work that we've already started, um, being of service, um, being of service to, to, to others. Yes excuse me, you need to be of service to yourself first through, through, through empowering your mind. So with my mental health advocacy, what I say is that I call the mind the powerhouse, the tool that can change the narratives that exist and the lives um, that exist in our societies. And being able to do that is being of service to the world. And I'll, that, that is the messaging that I'll spread because I do believe that if we work on the mind, so many of the social ills that we face in our societies, um, there will be a huge change if we empower the minds of people first. There's been a lot of research that has been shown that most people are discouraged. I mean, right now we're living through a pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic, and now more than ever, the messaging of mental health and letting people know that it's okay to not be okay, but also um, um, uh, speaking to, to world organizations to, to push forward the message of mental health and telling people that they're not alone. I think it's time now more than ever that we empower the minds of people for us to actually get somewhere as a society. Yes, I think I think um, mental health education is our starting point. When people are educated about the things that they're scared of, then they become less scared of it, or they become less shamed, um, less ashamed um, of it. The, the biggest thing about mental health or mental illnesses is the stigma that exists in our society right now. There's a lack of education about. Um, illnesses such as depression, anxiety, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia. And once we start educating people on that, then they'll be less scared of what uh, of it because now they know exactly what it is. People fear what they don't know. And that's because there's a lack of education around, uh, around mental health. Ah, there's been so many, there's been so many, but um, I've had two that have stood out for me. And that was uh, when, even before I became a South Africa, I was working on a project that provided um, families, 2000 families with food for, for a month. Um, at that time, that was peak COVID and people in, 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 in um, my community were struggling with, with food security. Um, so, so playing a role in alleviating food insecurity, that meant a lot to me. And it showed me how much more we can do if we come together as civil society, government and private sector. If we come together and work together, we can provide, um, uh, we can make a sustainable change in our societies, teach people um, or keep them with the skills to, to be able to help themselves, which is something that I've been working on um, throughout my reign. But another one was when I was reading my book uh, to children um, just last week, I was reading the book to them and you know, when you're reading their, their, their grade ones, so they're like six years old. So I'm reading the book to them. And then after that, their teacher stands up and she starts asking them questions. I was very shocked to see that they understood the messaging of the book. We asked them, what does this book tell you? That if you're being bullied, speak up. If something is wrong, speak up, use your voice. They're, they're six years old and they knew that they needed to use their voice in order to express themselves. They don't need to keep anything um, inside. And that is the impact of this book. So for me, that was absolutely amazing to engage with the children and just to just them knowing at the age of six that their voices matter. That, that was amazing for me. I'm sure your book is a, is a step to change this vision this vision of mental illness. And I'm sure worldwide your book is, we have need your book for the education of children in worldwide. Yes, yes, and, and I hope it can reach the world um, so everyone can find their magic too, just as I found mine.
in what way? Um, I think I've, I would like to, to, to believe that the way that I've positively in, um, impacted my community is through, um, is through the emphasis of kindness. Uh, in everything, the, the biggest thing in our society, the biggest thing about mental health, the biggest thing about life in general is that we need to remember to be kind to ourselves and to be kind to others. There's something, um, there's something in our country that we call Ubuntu and it, it, speaks, it speaks about I am because you are. And when you extend the kindness that you give yourself to other people, um, you're being of service. So I think the biggest impact I've had is just reminding people of something that they already have inside of them, which is kindness. Practice kindness, be kind to yourself, be kind to others. It means, um, it means spreading hope. Um, I think right now, especially during the pandemic, most of us were very hopeless. Um, and um, having the platform that we do, um, even in the advocacies that we have, um, giving someone hope is probably one of the best things that you can ever do because hope goes a long way. Hope can change the narratives of someone's life. Um, just giving them hope um, is the biggest thing. So I think um, being in the beauty pageant space uh, with the work that we've done with the other, with the other uh, beauty uh, pageant winners, um, um, I think hope is the greatest thing that we can um, give to people or even spread as a message as well, hope and kindness. I don't have a secret talent. Um, I think, I think maybe I'll just surprise the world. Uh, I'll surprise the world, you never know. Um, but yeah, I'm looking, I'm looking forward to just showing all parts of myself, not just the Miss South Africa or Miss World South Africa, but just showing them Shudu, showing them my heart and just, just enjoying every single step um, of, of the Miss World journey. Because as I said, just going to Puerto Rico, just being, um, um, announced as Miss World South Africa means I'm part of the Miss World family. Um, so I just want to show my heart and just show myself, show them Shudu. Um, and if there's, a, if there's a talent in there somewhere, I will definitely show it. <laughs> the thing I love the most about our country is the diversity and the people, uh, the diversity of the people. Um, South African people, like I said, they, they, they're something that we were raised on and it is Ubuntu I am because you are. So, so that is something that I will share um, about myself because of my country, because my country has taught me that where we are a community before anything else, like that's the biggest thing about my country. We are a community. Um, your neighbor, your, for example, when I was growing up, my neighbor, I could go to my neighbor's house and just sit there and I'd feel like I'm part of the family. And South Africans have a way of making people feel like that. You know, they, they have a way of making um, people that aren't, that aren't even your blood relatives feel like they're family. We are a community. And that is something that I'm taking with me to the world, um, a sense of community. I'm a community driven, dr driven person. And I, I want to work with the um, other Miss World contestants uh, to, build, to, 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 to um, change the community the respective communities that we come from. The small things that make me better. Um, I think learning from people. Uh, my biggest thing, my biggest thing is, I love conversations because you get to learn about the other person. That's my, I love it. You get to learn about the other person, but you also get to learn about yourself through the other person's eyes, you know? I've had so many, the reason I am the way that I am is because of the multiple conversations that I've had with people. So interacting, because as human beings, we're relational beings and conversations and learning from other people is a way to grow, I believe. Um, so that, that, is, that, is, that is something about me that I, I think, I, I'm not that I think that I will take to the world, just wanting to learn from the different, different cultures that I'll encounter and, 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 and just, experiencing all of that. Uh, I would be grateful for my family. Uh, my, my family is, is everything. Um, the, 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 the values that I've learned today 
The fact that I can sit here in front of you and have this interview as Miss South Africa, Miss World South Africa, is because of my family, especially my, my great grandmother and my grandmother. They have instilled values and, and, and a work ethic in me that I take with me everywhere that I go. Um, they've taught me the importance of kindness, the importance of love, the importance of being of service. Um, and my family, they've impacted me great, um, uh, uh, greatly. And I think, and I think that is the one thing that I'm most grateful for because in front of them, they just see me, they call me Abby. So they just see Abby, they, they, they just see me and they teach me so much about myself through the laughs, through the, the love, through the sharing of food. Um, I love my family so much. What is the name of your parents? My parents, um, my, my, my mom's name is Tandi and my dad's name is Rinderani. Uh, they can travel to Puerto Rico to support you for the final, the final of Miss War? My mother, yes, my mother's coming uh, to Puerto Rico. She's coming with my sister. I'm very, very excited about that. It's a, it's a great travel for, for your parents, no? For your mom yeah. and your sister. My, my, yes, my mom and my sister, uh, we, 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 we love traveling together. So for, for her to, 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 to be able to come to Puerto Rico is amazing because I, I can just get to feel her energy. Uh, my mom has this thing when I look at her, it's almost like I'm, I've already made her proud no matter what. And, and just having her love there, having, and she doesn't, I feel like she's a representation of the women that came before us, my grandmother, my great grandmother and my aunts. So having her there is just like having my entire family there. Being of service um, and working hard to be of service. I know that I, I say of service a lot, but I really mean it. It's something that I've, I've, I've wanted since I was eight. And I think when you get a crown like Miss South Africa or even a Miss World crown, the, if it's just about you, then it's not impactful. But when you, when you use it to be of service to other people, the, the legacy that you leave is the lives that you touch or the lives that you impact. And I would want them to, that is the legacy that I want to leave because through Mindful Mondays, through the Mindful Movement, uh, be it the book, be it the talks I've given, be it the people that I've met, I've been of service to the people around me and many lives have been impacted. And, and I would want the next Miss South Africa through her own advocacy, through her own work to just show her heart and, 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 and also just be of service through her advocacy as well. Just be yourself. I think, I think that's the greatest advice that I can tell them. Just be yourself. Uh, because when you're, you're yourself, you enjoy it, you know? Um, you enjoy it, you enjoy the ride, and you are present in every single moment when you're just yourself. Um, I know there's a lot of pressure to be perfect, especially for, for, for beauty pageant title holders, but when you're yourself, I think that's the greatest gift you can give yourself into the world. Not really, because I feel like all of them or all the different, um, the previous title holders, um, they, they brought something different to the table. So you can't really pick a favorite because they had different advocacies as well. You know, we can only learn from what they've done before. And, and, and I, as I've been watching the Miss World pageant and the other pageants as well, I realized that I am because they were, they were before me, you know? So they've laid the groundwork for me to be where I am today through, the, through their different advocacies. So I think if they all did the same thing, then maybe you could say you could pick a favorite, but they've, they've just done so many different things and impacted lives in so many different ways that I don't have a favorite, but rather I learn from each one of them. My guilty pleasure is medical shows, uh, medical TV shows. I have watched Grey's Anatomy. I have watched The Good Doctor and I've repeated it time and time again. And I'm probably going to start New Amsterdam soon. I love, I love medical dramas and medical TV shows. I could sit and watch them all day and finish them in a day if I could. Um, so that's my guilty pleasure, medical TV shows. Top of my bucket list. Top of my bucket list would be to one day be president. <laughs> you, you, you want to become a, a, a president of South Africa? 
right? One day, yes. Yes. And you, after you read, you begin, you start in political, uh, a, petit, a political career journey? Um, after, uh, after, after Miss World, I would love to study. So I'd like to do my master's um, either at Harvard or Oxford. Um, I'm not sure in what yet, because I've done, I've done a bit of everything. Um, but first is my education, equipping myself with the necessary skills to, be, to, to, to hold a title such as president. Um, and then I also want to do a lot of work with the UN. So I've always wanted to work with or for the UN since I was a child. Um, they've inspired me so much. So I want to do a bit of work with them. And then after that, then I'll start, um, I'll, feel, I'll feel like I've got enough experience to start um, my political aspirations. But um, I've always wanted to work for the UN and that's going to be my starting point. My ultimate dream, my ultimate dream would be to use my God-given talents and abilities to, to touch the lives of others. So the, you know, when you ask me about a secret talent, um, if I do have one, I don't think I do, but um, I, 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 I've always had this thing where I, I want a greater power than me to use me for something greater than me, if that makes sense. I don't know if that makes sense. So I want to use my God-given talents and abilities to impact the lives of other people in one way or another, be it in the creative arts. If it's in the creative arts, then I want to creatively touch people's lives and impact them through my arts. Uh, be it through my advocacies, um, I want to be able to impact someone's life because my, the village where I come from, right, um, my grandmother used to, my grandmother used to take care of this girl that lived next door to our house, she used to, she used to take care of her two brothers, so it was a childhood family. And that girl and her family would come over to, to our house. And um, my grandmother would make sure that she's well taken care of. Um, they've got food and, and they've got everything that they need. And through that, and at first I was just like, wow, this is amazing. Growing up seeing that made me want to make sure that the lives that I touch or the lives that I impact is not only my own life, but other lives too, because through just that, that girl received an education and, and, and she, she became something that she wanted to be, but it takes someone investing in, in other people or, or being of service um, to, to, to impact other people's lives. And I think that is the legacy that most of us should leave um, in this world, not just me, 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 but all of us together. Um, the title of this magazine, that's a hard one, <laughs> that's a really hard one, I've never thought about that. Um, wow, I don't know, I actually don't know, do you have any ideas? <laughs> it's difficult, I know. It's difficult, it's difficult, because you need to find the right title that captures who you are right so captures what you're trying to to to, to do so it's, it's it's a little difficult i think um i'm gonna think about it i'm gonna think about it. the only name that i can think about but it's already taken excuse me is becoming by michelle obama you know that name yeah. i think um i love the woman that i'm becoming and i would want like the magazine to capture women that are becoming whoever they want to be you know creating their own seats at the table You're asking me really hard questions now. Uh, who do I choose as a co-star? Who do I choose? It depends on what the movie is about, though. Um, I think it depends on what the movie is about. Um, one person, but I think it depends on what the movie is about. Uh, I, I love, I love. Um, I love Kerry Washington. I love um, Viola Davis. Um, I love Meryl Streep. Meryl Streep is one of my, if, if I could, actually Meryl Streep is like one of my favorite actors um, ever. So anything Meryl, Meryl Streep related. It would be um, a lifestyle show um, that focuses on mental health. 
I think once we get mental health on big platforms like that, a lot will change in terms of destigmatizing it. The perfect planet, goodness. Um, I think it will be a planet where mental wellness is prioritized, where there's gender equality, meaning that we are not, not even just gender equality, where there's no labels uh, or discrimination. Um, so we are, we are just who we are. There's, we are not labeled by the, our skin color, um, our status in life, where we come from, but we are labeled by what we present to the world. Um, I think the biggest thing about our society is that we try to label everything. And that's where the, that's the, 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 the entry point of discrimination. And that's why we find that there's gender inequality in, in the world today. And when we label people, even in the mental health space, as soon as someone has a mental illness, uh, you label them as crazy. So I think it's a world without labels. It's a world without labels where we are all equal. No, 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 no. not yet. Mm. Not yet. It's not. It's a. It's a secret. It's an idea of a secret idea for the moment. No, we're just discussing it, but we don't have a final idea yet. Um, I think. Yeah, like we, we don't have a final idea yet. So I, we, we're just discussing uh, possible ideas and um, sending each other pictures of what we think um, would best represent the country, but also me as well. Um, and yeah, so, so we, we've just, we've been speaking about it and, 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 and trying to make sure that it, it has a meaning. In all honesty, I think you've asked me everything um, in the sense that you've asked me the serious, serious questions, but you also asked me questions that best represent you do, you know, like, what is my guilty pleasure? Um, I think that question always throws me off guard because I feel like, mm, but, <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah, I think, I think you've asked me everything. This has been such a, it felt less than it didn't feel like an interview. It felt like a conversation, which I love very much. So thank you so much for making me feel that comfortable. A message for my fans. Um, I think they're not my fans. They're more like my village, like my the people that uh, make me the person that I am and 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 support me. And the 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 message that I have to them is thank you so much, Ndoriwuwa, from the bottom of my heart for the support that you've shown me. I believe that I am because of of them and and the support that they've given me. Uh, I find myself wanting to work harder because it's like. I can do it. You know, when people tell you that you can do it and I thank them for the kindness that they've shown me and the love that they've shown me because I, I never walk alone. I walk with an entire village behind me and the village are the people that are supporting me every single day. And I, I, I hope through the work that I've done, I have sort of paid it forward and said thank you through my work. Um, so to them, just remember to be kind to yourself. Remember to check in with yourself um, and remember to be kind to others too. <laughs>